Hello and welcome to the Geomestic channel. In this lesson, we'll be introducing inscribed angles and circles and taking a look at a handy little tool called the inscribed angle theorem to solve some problems. You can click down in the description below to find a link for guided notes worksheets that you can print off and follow along with as you go. So to start off today, we're going to look at a couple of definitions. So in a circle, there's a few different types of angles um, that we deal with regularly. First of which is what we call a central angle. A central angle in a circle, it's called a central angle because the vertex is at the center of the circle. We also have this thing called an inscribed angle. Now an inscribed angle has a vertex on the circle or on the edge of the circle, like so. Okay, so we got central angle, and we've got inscribed angles. Now, each of these angles um, are made up of two different types of segments. The first, on the central angle, we've got um, a radius is um, going to make up that angle. So a radius on either side of the angle makes up that angle. On an inscribed angle, each of these segments are chords. Okay, so a chord is a segment that doesn't necessarily um, go through the center. It's just a segment where the endpoints are on the circle. Okay, so each of the sides of this angle are made up of chords. Here, each one is made up of a radius. Now, the arc that each of these angles kind of cuts off, for example, in the central angle, the arc that is in between the two endpoints here, okay, we call that the intercepted arc for that angle. Okay, so that central angle intercepts or cuts off that blue arc right there. And just like in an inscribed angle does the same thing, this inscribed angle is gonna intercept this arc. Okay, so when we talk about an intercepted arc, that just means the arc that is in between the endpoints of that angle. Okay, so the relationship between the arcs and the angles that we have um, with central angles, we've talked about this before, is that a central angle, central angle, so say this angle measure right there, x degrees, a central angle is always going to be equal or congruent to the measure of its intercepted arc. Okay, that's because you've got 360 degrees around the outside of the circle, around the center of the circle is also 360 degrees, so it should make sense that the central angle is going to be equal to the measure of the arc. Now, does that also hold true for inscribed angles? Not quite, but we do find there to be um, a pretty nice little relationship between them. So here's how we're gonna find it. So let's start off with a big circle here. Okay, start off with an inscribed angle where one of the segments is gonna go through the center. I'm gonna put some points, so we got point A, the center of the circle we're going to call O. We've got point B down here. This is going to be the vertex of our inscribed angle. And then point C. Okay, so I've got angle ABC. That is the inscribed angle. Center of the circle is point O. Okay, so really what we're trying to get at here is the measure of the inscribed angle ABC in relation to the measure of the intercepted arc that it cuts, which is arc AC. Okay, so let's start there. So the measure of arc AC, measure of, measure of arc AC. Okay, so the notation here, M just means the measure of, we've got arc AC. So the measure of arc AC. Okay, the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna create a little triangle here by drawing another radius. So from O to C, just do a little dotted line here. From O to C is a radius, goes from the center of the circle to the edge of the circle. And what I've done here is I've created a little triangle, I've got OBC, and that triangle, because radius is congruent everywhere you draw, okay, those two are congruent. Because that is a, um, a triangle where two sides are the same, that's an isosceles triangle. And in an isosceles triangle, not only are the two sides the same, you've also got two base angles that are the same. Okay, so we gotta keep that in mind here in a second. All right, so the measure of arc AC we just said a minute ago that the measure of an arc is equal to the measure of the central angle that intercepts that arc. So if I just look at the central angle AOC, that central angle has to be equal to the measure of its intercepted arc. So the measure of arc AC, it's gonna be equal to the measure of angle AOC. Okay, central angles are equal to their arcs. Okay, so I'm gonna bring this down, the measure of arc AC measure of angle AOC. Now going back to this triangle, so we looked at a theorem um, quite a while back um, that said that in a triangle, 
if you extend out one of the sides, okay, so right now I'm just looking at triangle OBC. If you extend out one of the sides, so I got this extension from O to A, that angle, so I'm talking about this angle right here, that angle, that exterior angle is equal to the non-adjacent angles of that triangle. Okay, this is called the exterior angles theorem of a triangle. So the two angles furthest away from the exterior angle at this vertex, the sum of those two angles is equal to this angle on the outside. Okay, and the reason is because a triangle adds up to 180, a straight line also adds up to 180, so I know these two angles are supplementary, but if these two angles are supplementary, that means that the sum of these two also has to be supplementary to this angle here. So long story short is that this angle AOC is equal to the sum of angles B and C. Okay, so the measure of AC, this arc, I'm gonna replace angle AOC with angle B plus angle C, they're the same. So this angle again is equal to the sum of these two angles. So the measure of angle B plus the measure of angle C. But we just said just a second ago, since that's an isosceles triangle, measure of angle B and the measure of angle C are the same, they're equal. So the measure of angle AC is equal to angle B and angle C are the same, so I can just replace angle C, and just write angle B, same thing, which really means I have two angle Bs added together. So two times the measure of angle B. Okay, last but not least, last thing I'm gonna do, I'm gonna divide both sides by two to get our final relationship to get rid of this two right here. So divide that by two, divide that by two, which really means I have half of arc AC. That's what I've got, okay? So again, my initial um, problem here was to relate angle A, B, C, or angle B here, with the intercepted arc, and that's what I've done. I've got the measure of angle B is equal to half the measure of arc AC. Okay, so that's the relationship that we have here, is that the measure of an inscribed angle, so angle B was the inscribed angle, the measure of the inscribed angle is half the measure of its intercepted arc. So I've got inscribed angle B right here. There's the inscribed angle. The arc that it intercepts is right here. And I know that this angle, angle B, is gonna be half the measure of its intercepted arc. Okay, and that is what the inscribed angle theorem says. So the inscribed angle theorem says that the measure of an inscribed angle is half of the measure of its intercepted arc. Now, the same rule also applies um, when you have an angle on a circle. It's not quite an inscribed angle. Um, it's kind of maybe hanging off the edge of the circle. As long as your angle has a vertex on the circle and one of the sides of the angles is a chord, this rule still applies. So in this case, we have kind of a tangent line and a chord that makes up this angle. Okay, so this angle right here, X, that angle is gonna be half of the measure of its intercepted arc. So what is the arc that it intercepts? Well, the arc at the endpoints of this angle is here. So this angle is gonna be half the measure of this whole arc. Okay, so it applies to angles that are not quite inscribed angles that kind of hang off the edge of the circle as well. Now, before we get to um, the examples here, we're gonna look at a couple um, little corollaries or side notes that also hold true because of the inscribed angles theorem. Okay, so the first one is that if you have two inscribed angles that intercept the same arc, okay, two inscribed angles that intercept the same arc are going to be congruent. Okay, this should make sense. Let's say we've got two endpoints on the circle and here's the arc in question. We've got this arc right here. Point A, call this point B. Okay, and let's say that we've got uh, an inscribed angle that has endpoints at those two endpoints there. So here's an inscribed angle, we'll call that point C. But maybe you've got another inscribed angle that also has endpoints at A and B. Okay, so let's go say right here. We'll call that point D. Okay, so I've got two inscribed angles, angle ACB and angle ADB both of which intercept the same arc, AB. Okay, so we know that since the measure of an inscribed angle is half the measure of its intercepted arc, we know that whatever this arc is, if I take half of it, that would be the measure of this angle here and this angle here. 
Okay, so both of those angles are going to be the same measure because they intercept the same arc. Okay, so that's the first little corollary. Second one is that if you have an angle inscribed in a semicircle, semicircle being half of the circle, so there's a diameter right there. Let's say you have an inscribed angle that has endpoints at the endpoints of that diameter. So there's an inscribed angle right here. Okay, because I know that half of a circle is 180 degrees, our inscribed angle theorem says that the inscribed angle is always half the measure of the arc. Well, if the arc is 180 degrees, that means the inscribed angle, half of that would have to be 90. So that would have to be a right angle. Okay, so an inscribed angle uh, that is inscribed in a semicircle, that's always gonna be a right angle. Okay, last little corollary here. This one's really helpful. So let's say you have a circle and you've got a four-sided figure, a quadrilateral inscribed inside of that circle. Okay, something like this. So the four points of the quadrilateral are inside the circle. Okay, the corollary here is that um, opposite angles, opposite angles, so meaning angles that are not adjacent. So if I've got angle one, angle two, angle three, and angle four, I know angle one and angle three are opposite, angle two and angle four are opposite. Okay, so opposite angles of a quadrilateral inscribed inside of a circle, they're gonna be supplementary to one another. Okay, so the measure of angle one plus the measure of angle three, so those two opposite angles, some of those is gonna to have to be 180, just like the measure of angle two plus the measure of angle four. That's also gonna be equal to 180. Okay, so we can use all these little tips and tricks here um, to solve lots of different kinds of problems. The problems that we're gonna look at, I really like these. They're like little puzzles, like circle puzzles here. So let's just start with one, we'll kind of work our way through, let's see how we do. Okay, so we've got a circle. There's the center of the circle. I'm just gonna kind of draw a bunch of lines around here, put a bunch of chords in. start putting some numbers down. It's gonna be 84. None of this is drawn to scale, by the way, so just kind of bear with me here. We'll just go with the numbers. Um, let's say this is A, B, C, and D. Okay, so the goal here, obviously, is to uh, find the values of the variables here. We've got an A, B, a C, and a D. Okay, these are all either angle measures or arc measures, so these are all in degrees. Okay, so using the uh, inscribed angle theorem as well as the corollaries that we've talked about, we're gonna try to figure out the measures of our missing uh, pieces here. So there's really no um, definite place to start. You don't really have to start with A and kind of work your way through. I just usually like to you know, kind of find things that I know for sure are true and just work my way through. So the first thing that I notice, kind of start with the low hanging fruit. I've got an inscribed angle right here. Okay, there's an inscribed angle. D is the measure of the inscribed angle. What is the measure of the arc that it intercepts? It's 60. Okay, so the angle D and the arc 60 have what relationship? Okay, it's that the measure of the inscribed angle is always half the measure of the arc. Okay, so it's pretty quick. If the arc is 60 degrees, the angle has to be half of that. So it's half of 60, it's 30. So angle D is gonna be 30 degrees. Okay, I always like to kind of put it in the picture as well. You never know when um, finding these pieces is gonna lead you to more pieces. Okay, next I can actually do the exact same thing with angle C. Okay, I've got another inscribed angle right next to angle D. Angle C is right here. And if I do the same thing, the measure of the inscribed angle C has to be half the measure of its intercepted arc. And the intercepted arc is 84. So half of 84 is gonna be 42. So angle C is gonna be 42 degrees. All right. Uh, next place I can go, once again, same thing. I can look at, I can look at angle B. So angle B is right here. I kind of extend it out, go to the end points on the circle, look at the intercepted arc that angle B cuts through. 
So I'm going from this point here all the way around to this point here. The intercepted arc for angle B is the sum of all the arcs in between. So you see we've got a 60 degree arc and a 100 degree arc together is 160. So the measure of angle B is gonna be half of the measure of the arc, which is 160. Half of 160 is gonna be 80. So measure of angle B is gonna be 80 degrees. Okay, last but not least, we got angle, or sorry, arc A. So the measure of arc A. So one thing to keep in your back pocket, you always know that an entire circle is 360 degrees. So in this case, I've got four arcs. Okay, so that circle's gotten to four arcs. I know three of the four, and I'm just missing that last one. So what I can do is I can add up the three that I already know, subtract from 360. What's left over is gonna give me uh, what angle A or arc A would have to be. So if I add up the 100, so 100, 60 plus 84. If I add all those together and I subtract that from 360, I'm going to get uh, what the measure of arc A would have to be. So if I add those together, uh, 86, 224, I believe. So 224. And if I subtract 360 or 224 from 360, that should give me uh, my answer of 116. So it's 116. So arc A is 116 degrees. All right, let's try another one. So you can see why I kind of call these circle puzzles. Um, because again, there's really no definite place to start. You just kind of have to fumble your way through until you, you know, you get all the ports that you need. All right, so we're gonna go with a diameter down the middle here. get a couple of numbers here 120 degree arc call this one down here 56 and we're looking for a and b and this whole angle here is going to be c this arc is d and we've got e in the corner okay so one thing when you're doing problems like this one thing that you always want to look out for is if you have a diameter that's going to help you out quite a bit because you've essentially cut the circle into two separate pieces where one side is 180, the other side is 180. Okay, so more often than not, that's gonna help us out for probably more than one variable. So I've got A, B, C, D, and E. All right, so like I said, we're gonna start with the fact that this diameter cuts this left side into a semicircle. So we've got 180 degrees here. I've got this arc up here is 120. E and 120 together have to make 180. So 180 minus 120, that's gonna get us E right off the bat. And that is going to be 60 degrees. Okay, so 180 minus 120 is 60. Okay, so I noticed that I've got inscribed angle A right there, that the intercepted arc is that 60 degree arc. So angle A, if I extend out, get the endpoints right here, the intercepted arc being 60, the angle again is always half of the arc. So that means inscribed angle A is going to be half of 60, that's 30. 30 degrees. Okay, follow along that same idea. I've got another inscribed angle B. The arc that it intercepts is the 120 degree arc. So angle B, half the arc. Half of 120 is 60. So angle B is 60. Okay, now over here at angle C, now angle C again, it's not an inscribed angle per se, um, but it follows the same rules as an inscribed angle because I've got a tangent line, okay, a tangent line connected to a, um, a cord there that does cut off an arc, so that angle C is gonna be half of the intercepted arc D. The problem is I don't have either of those. Okay, so I'm gonna have to figure out what the measure of the arc is before I can get the measure of the angle. Now I'm gonna use a strategy I did in the last one. In the last one, we had the circle cut into four arcs and we've got the same thing going on here. So I've got 120, 60, 56, and then arc uh, measure D 
which again, all of those have to add up to 360. So if I take 120, 60, 56, add those together, subtract that from 360, that's gonna give me uh, the measure of arc D. So if you do that, I promise it's gonna be 124 degrees. Messed up that last one. I'll embarrass myself this time and try to write it out. So 124. So if you add up all four of those together, 124, 120, 60, 56, that's all gonna be 360. Okay, and then last but not least, again, angle C, because it behaves like an inscribed angle, that angle is gonna be half of that arc and half of 124 is 62. Okay, so key here is again, utilizing that diameter, you got 180 on both sides. the um, quadrilateral inscribed inside of a circle. You remember we said that the opposite angles here are supplementary. We're going to use that in just a minute. Let's go ahead and get a, let's get a diameter in here. All right. So numbers we got, we got 112. We're going to go 51 there, 72 the top and we'll call it A, B, C, D. All right, so notice again that we've got a diameter. Um, we're gonna start there. It's usually the best place to start, like I said. So we've got the diameter here. This cuts this into 180 and 180. Since I already have 112 down here, I've only got one other arc. So 112 plus what is gonna get me to 180? That's gonna tell me what this arc up here is. And 180 minus 112, that's gonna give us 68. So I've got this arc up here is 68. Now notice that's not one of my variables, um, but again, there's really no good place to start necessarily. So even if it's not a piece that you have to have, chances are you might need it later. And in this case, this directly is gonna help me find um, angle D. You can see that angle D is an inscribed angle and it just so happens to intercept that 68 degree arc. So um, again, anything that you can find, use the numbers that you have. Even if you don't need it, just write it down. It's probably gonna help you out. So I've got 68 as my arc. Measure of the inscribed angle is gonna be half of that arc. So half of 68, it's gonna be 34. I've got D, 34 degrees. Okay, so at this point, I've got the measure of this entire angle here. So again, this is uh, an inscribed angle. It's one of the angles inside of the quadrilateral. And from that corollary, we said that opposite angles in a quadrilateral inscribed inside of a circle, those opposite angles are gonna be supplementary. So this whole angle here, the 34 and the 51, if I add those together, which is gonna be 85, okay, so that whole angle down there is 85 degrees, that with its opposite angle, so that's gonna be angle B plus angle B, has to be 180 degrees, they have to be supplementary. So angle B plus 85 equals 180. So 180 minus 85 is gonna give me what angle B is. And 180 minus 85 is 95. Okay, so I've got angle B is 95 degrees. Okay, so next step here, I think we're gonna use that 95 degree angle B up here since it is, again, an inscribed angle. Vertex is on the edge of the circle. Okay, we know that the measure of the inscribed angle is always half the measure of the arc. So if I have the angle, I can double it to get to the measure of the arc. All right, so if you have the arc, take half of it to get to the angle. Just do the opposite if you're going from the angle to the arc. So what that means is angle B being 95 and points here and here, that means this arc has to be double 95. Double 95, you multiply 95 by two, you get 190. So that means that this whole thing out here, which is 112 and A together, so angle A plus 112, that's gotta be double 95, which is 190. Okay, so angle A plus 112 equals 190. What is 190 minus 112? 190 minus 112, that's gonna be 78. Okay, so I've got 
A right here is going to be 78. 78 degrees. All right, so the only thing I have left now is um, angle C. Now, angle C, again, is an inscribed angle, but if you extend angle C out to its endpoints, you can see that one endpoint is here, the other endpoint is here. And I'm missing this little piece right there. Now, I could take 360 minus all the rest of these, uh, and I can figure out that piece and kind of work my way that way. What I'm gonna do, though, is I'm gonna, not necessarily a shortcut, I'm just gonna take um, the inscribed angle on the other side, because I know that these two together have to be 180. Okay, so if I can get this guy right there, I can subtract it from 180 to get C. That's what I'm gonna do. Since this inscribed angle here, which cuts off the intercepted arc of these two together, okay, if I add up 72 and 78, okay, 72 and 78 together, add those, you get 150. So this whole arc right here, this intercepted arc for angle, um, no name here, this angle right there. Okay, the angle is gonna be half of its intercepted arc, so 150 divided by two, that's gonna get me a 75 degree angle. And then again, opposite angles of a quadrilateral inscribed inside of a circle, they're supplementary. So 180 minus 75 is gonna get me angle C. 180 minus 75 is 105. Okay, so this one, pretty tricky one. Um, just because there's not really a, a direct way to get most of these, we kind of have to work through other pieces that we don't have as variables to get what we need. But, you know, that's just my best advice is to, to forget about the variables at the beginning. Just kind of start with what you know. Just keep finding more missing pieces until you kind of get all that you need to get those variables. All right. That's it for today. Uh, if you want to do me a favor, you can give this video a thumbs up if it was helpful for you. And be sure to subscribe to the Geomastic channel to see more videos just like this one. Thanks for watching.